Hello, I'm Charlie Yagan. Today is April 15th, 2019. It's my great honor to be here with Wayne Gustafson, who was the architect involved with the relocation of the Yellowstone County Museum cabin, the McCormick cabin, from the northwest corner of 4th Avenue North at North 31st Street. Would that be okay, Wayne? That's right. That's exactly where it was located. Excellent. Mm -hmm. How did you happen to get involved with the project? Well, I received a call or an invitation from Peter Yagen, a third year grandfather, who invited me to, uh, or invited me or asked me if I'd be willing to help measure the cabin and help prepare for a relocation of the building. And I was honored to uh, be requested, so I remember going with him to the cabin, and we talked about what needed to be done in order to, you know, prepare for the move from from the uh, location on 31st up to the top of the rims. What did that neighborhood look like when you got there? And the well, the the neighborhood at that time was all houses, mostly smaller homes. There were some larger homes. I remember the Paul McCormick house was about a two-story home. And behind it was this cabin, which was on the same property. And it was uh, near, the, near the alley on the back part of the corner. And uh, the rest of it was all homes around the neighborhood. Were you part of the decision making with regard to what the final location of the cabin was going to be? Uh, no, that had been done earlier because a lot of ideas had been expressed. There were other locations that had been proposed. And then uh, I understand Dick Logan, who, who, whose uh, family was involved with the airport up here, suggested it be moved to the top of the rims. And that evidently was really a good suggestion because that was what was accepted. What was accepted. Mm -hmm. Interesting. When you got up here in preparation for the cabin arriving, mm -hmm. Digging in this soil up here must have been a bit of a challenge, wasn't it? Well, well, it wasn't soil. <laughs> it was solid sandstone rock, as we know all the, along the rims are. Uh, so we knew we had to take special plans to excavate, to prepare a excavation for the foundation. And we also had to be sure there was enough space uh, to uh, place the place the building because because there was needed there was a, a uh, parking area here and the road went right by the the north side of the cabin and that's really why the cabin is oriented this direction now with the main entrance towards the airport I see I see mm -hmm. down there during the during the move uh -huh. um, explain that process a little to us could you well, moving a building is a complicated process, but you have to rely on the expertise of the house movers. You know, in those days, it wasn't unusual to have um, several house moving uh, contractors, you know, in the community. Uh, many houses were moved off of their original location and and relocated to the another part of town or even out in the country. So I was, I just uh, w was um, uh, working closely with the house mover and it depended on his expertise in being able to uh, uh, support it and tie it together to make sure it was absolutely secure during the process. And I would imagine that going through town and then up North 27th Street was a bit challenging. <laughs> well, particularly going up the airport road. Uh, going through town, I would say, was, was rather routine because the utility companies worked you know, with the house mover. Uh, the po the uh, power lines were raised for clearance, and the uh, sheriff or the police provided escorts. It was just a slow process, very slow process, because this was a large cabin. Uh, however, going up the airport road to the air, up, we call it now up to the airport, was the most difficult part because it was a steep incline, and it had rocks uh, that were had to be uh, navigated through at the top. And so it was a real challenge and a success for the contractor who moved the house or moved the building. And I remember reading about that just recently that they paid the exorbitant sum of $800 mm -hmm. to move this from downtown buildings up to the airport here. I can't imagine the cost at that time being that, uh, you know, that uh, small amount. So <laughs> it was a real bargain to get this building uh, the wonderful cabin here up up in this location. 
When you moved the cabin up here, that's when the addition went on for the caretakers, wasn't it? Yes, it was recognized that it would be wise to have uh, someone on the property to look after the, you know, look after the cabin and take care of it. And so the the apartment was added at the end on the side of it. And I see now it's now it's nicely uh, uh, been remodeled for offices and more gallery space. More gallery space. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's been a good thing. But it was important to have a caretaker's or a curator's uh, accommoda accommodations up here because it was so isolated at that time, as we know. Do you have any recollection of this mantelpiece behind us, which was quite a piece? Do you remember that challenge? As I understand, it didn't come at the same time the cabin did. I remember the story, but it was told to me later. That's one thing I had forgotten. But I, did, I do remember that a stonemason had carefully marked the the, each of the stones in the fireplace. And uh, so they made proper plans to, they couldn't move the fireplace at, you know, with the building. It was too heavy and too uh, awkward to tie into the logs of the cabin. So it had to be dismantled. And the, the story I remember is that it was mistakenly taken to the dump and uh, quickly, <laughs> quickly uh, instructed to try to return it and find it, and I guess that was successful. It's successful. <laughs> oh, that's quite a story. Well, you, know? you never know what's going to happen when you're ch taking a challenge like a uh, structure of this nature <laughs> and complications of, uh, just imagine, uh, those people who would visit this will, will be impressed with just the, the logs who, um, that make up the uh, ceiling. It's an impressive ceiling with logs as well as all the large logs that make up the perimeter of the structure. It's just an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Well, and you're largely responsible for that, <laughs> Wayne, that's for sure. Now, it, when it came up, it still had the soil roof on it, didn't it? Yeah, it had the soil roof on it. So imagine the weight that had to be planned into the trailer and the wheels that, that were, would carry that extra weight. That's right. But then that was re-roofed, you know, and the more permanent uh, roofing materials and shingles were put on later. And it was tried, tried to match the, uh, the uh, new roof of the caretaker's wing, too. I see. Sure. Uh -huh. Interesting that that came after the move and not before. But money was tight, too. I thought it was easier to keep it in place, too. You sure. know, it did provide a structural benefit to uh, keep all the existing structure. Just out of curiosity, now having, looking at this accomplishment that's now been here for 65 years and looking at the cabin, what do you think about when you see it? When you see this structure because really, if you don't swerve, you'll run into it as you come out of the airport. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Well, I'm just amazed that we have this treasure here in, in uh, Billings. I can't really find the words to compliment all those who plan to save the cabin. Not only save it, but transform it into this, what I call the treasure of a museum now, a priceless, priceless asset for our community. I just love coming back to it time and time again. And I ask people who, who do uh, uh, come with me or if we're on a visit, to look at the cabin itself, the, the, the exhibits are priceless and they're marvelous, but I ask them to take a few minutes to admire the workmanship and the craftsmanship and the condition of this wonderful building, which is now well over 100 years old. Imagine the condition of the logs are still solid. It's, it's uh, absolutely a, uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful asset for Billings and for all of us who appreciate history. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. You know, in my readings about the cabin, uh, Paul McCormick Jr. said of his father that he built this on that location down there on North 31st uh -huh. in 1891 hmm. is when it was constructed. Yeah. So. Yeah. so, well, what's, may, let me ask you a question. I understood there was a cabin that Paul McCormick Sr. had built at Junction City and that I had heard the stories that that cabin had been relocated to Billings. Do you know anything about that? I, I only know what amounts to what I think to be a rumor in that there was a, 
uh, an allegation at one point that this was that cabin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've not been able to authenticate I that. See. Uh -huh. But that timing would be mm -hmm. probably not too far off, 1891. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I'm sorry, I can't definitively answer that It'd be question. Nice to know. It would. That could be researched. Yeah. And the other thing I, I would. I am always fascinated with is the condition of the logs and where the logs came from. We mentioned this being well over a hundred years old and the logs are still solid and sound. And it would interest me where the, uh, you know, where Paul found the logs or where they, where the source where they, where they were uh, lumbered and brought into town. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh -huh. That's for sure. There isn't much left of Junction City. No, no, no. Not at all. Nothing, nothing down there. But it would make sense, stand to reason at that time. Of course, the railroad was coming. Yeah. It was here. And he was a freighter by trade, and there's no telling what he might have been able to do. Well, they could transport them on the railroad if, if they were there. I thought about that. But just uh, taking it apart and reassembling it, in my judgment, would be a manu monumental task. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And put it back together in the condition that we have today. Well, do you have any other thoughts about during that move was the weather good was the the were the city fathers happy because this actually ended up being on city ground mm -hmm. um, so there had to have been a certain amount of I suspect as you came up there was probably a police escort to keep people from zipping by and yeah, we did have a police escort and I think the main complaint was that it was blocking the road to the airport <laughs> but uh, I don't recall any specific other complaints. I think it was just uh, accepting the fact that we were on a project or on, on a, a contract that needed to be finished. I don't remember any particular celebration either. It was just doing our, doing our job. But doing job. the thing I recall about putting in the concrete foundation was getting the cabin on its proper support so that it could be gradually relocated and put on top of the concrete. And my concern was, boy, I hope I measured it right <laughs> so, so, so that it would fit. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, uh -huh. that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so some of those things come back to me, but uh, I, don't, I think the weather was fine. I think the transportation worked out very as the mover had planned. Mm -hmm. I think it was just all a great success. Oh, that's wonderful. It, well, it certainly is nice to hear it. You know, I happen to read and you're talking about the cabin at one point, there was a discussion as to whether to put it at Pioneer Park and the mm -hmm. neighbors kind of were up in arms and then there was a thought about putting it at, down at the normal school at Eastern Montana College. Uh -huh. And there was an article written uh, by one of the citizens that said he thought the best thing to do the cabin with the cabin was to saw it into cordwood <laughs> and provide it for as heating to the people who were less fortunate in town. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a partner of his. No, no. <laughs> That's too bad. But you know, to have the foresight and the imagination and the trust that your grandfather and his friends had to preserve this I think is remarkable. And I think those of us who are interested in history, you know, really need to appreciate that and to pass that on to our friends and our families because how, this could never happen again. We're sitting in a place of just, it could only be at one spot. And to thank uh, the foresight and the dreams that your grandfather and the, our, our uh, early settlers here in Billings could foresee that. Well, and, thank you. That's just a marvelous gift. And the uh, YMCA was involved, or YWCA, excuse me, was involved because they owned the property on which this sat. Right, right. And the, the YWCA and the McCormick family got together and kind of collaborated on this. I'm sure they, mm -hmm. they were nudged along a little bit, uh -huh. but then they gave it to the county, actually, and thus... Here it is, the Yellowstone County. Well, I think Museum. the y YWCA benefited because they used the funds, as I understand it, from the sale of the property to build their first uh, nice structure out on west of town in Wyoming. Yeah. And so that was another benefit to see how that helped so many other, you know, uh, uh, another organization that was so helpful to our people in the community. So there's another gift that I think is really needs to be recognized. Well, it's, they've certainly flourished. There's no question about that. Uh -huh. Now, I was just uh, 
thinking that, you know, our, <clears throat> the pioneers and our families that came to, came to Montana, they had their dreams. And the dreams are what led to the hopes, you know, to stay here. And it, but it's the hopes that led to the actions that allowed this to take place. Just think of the, if they didn't have their dreams or the hopes, we wouldn't have this treasure with us today. Yeah. And I just think it's remarkable history for us. Well, and it's interesting too that the groups that got together to kind of coordinate on this were the pioneers of Eastern Montana and their descendants. That's right. That's right. And the Yellowstone Historical Society. Uh huh. They that's were the right. driving forces, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And they're still active. They're still active. I know. Uh -huh. Both groups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's quite remarkable to be in this structure, that's for sure. Yeah. And I can't tell you how delightful it is to be here with you, <laughs> Wayne. This is yeah. really a treat. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're very complimentary. It's my honor to be part of this. Well, thanks. We appreciate that so much. Yeah.